have the taste of onion in my mouth, which I'm not sad about. I'm just it's a good taste. Hyper aware of it. Okay, I, I, I can't smell onion, so that's fine. <laughs> just about far enough away still. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're getting closer and closer every time we film. Yeah, and well, um, in the next batch, we'll just be on each other's shoulders. Yep. <laughs> balance. <laughs> it's going to be a circus act. So, so here's what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. CSS easing. Mm -hmm. It's a thing for this easing functions in CSS. Here they are. That's one. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh! There we go. All of those are CSS eases that you can do. Mm -hmm. Are They're... they all the 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 ones that have a a keyword name, or did you do some custom easing? Did some custom easing on them. Mm. Um, but you can't do stuff like this. True. Or this. True. That's the problem. Just don't do it. No, it's nice, though. <laughs> you don't think that was nice? Look at it. Do it again. <laughs> Look at that. It's nice. Why wouldn't you want to do that all over your web page? Well, I think Safari still has the, the right one, which is their dash k dash spring. Or what? There is a, spring? Yes, they do have a spring function. Um, but let's have a look at these ones. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is the kind of way that we define uh, these things. Yeah. Uh, as you say, we have keywords, but they all map to. They're just an alias for, yes. The cubic, cubic Bezier. Is it Bezier? Is it busy? Is it? I don't know. QB, QBB, <laughs> Cubic B. But yeah, so this is this is all of those easings can be defined in, in mm -hmm. this syntax. We call them easy. Like, they used to be called timing functions, mm -hmm. which you still see around in CSS, but they're now just called uh, easing functions because the idea is. We might get to use them for things other than animations at some point. Yeah. Like a gradient. For example. For example. Yeah. Uh, so here's how this works. Uh, this, this is a, a linear one. Mm -hmm. uh, and this looks like this. As in, as the input increases, and input the output. input is, is time. Uh, the, I input, guess the input is between 0 and 1. The progress. And the output is between 0 the and progress, 1. The progress, and you can. Yes. And with linear, it just takes the input as the output. With animations, there is progress on the time axis. I mean, with gradients, it would be a spatial progress, how much far. Exactly. Right? Well, yes. So 0, 1, start to finish. Yes. It, it maps to. That's, uh, that's better said than what I was waffling. About. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we can do this. Whee! And so the red numbers there is x and y coordinates. I've drawn there, and the green is the x and y coordinates of the other part of the, for the, for the, the Bezier handles. curve, for the, the handles of the curve. Mm. And what this means is it'll do this. Yeah. So you can see, because the curve was at the top, it sort of eased in, yeah. um, uh, well, sort of eased out, I guess, but there's a little bit of an ease in as well. Uh, but like we've all played with these handles in like Inkscape or something when we do the curves, which same thing, right? Exactly. Yes, this, this is uh, you know, a fundamental of drawing a two-dimensional line. Yeah. But you can do it to yeah you can you get a fair bit of freedom in yeah. terms of what you can do. There's one that overshoots. I yeah, even that, that is possible. Even that is possible. Um, but what is not possible is this, which is a that's true. A bounce easing. Yeah, I, I need more than one handle for that. Exactly. Or two. So as I think about like how can we get there? How can we make this happen on the web? Just add more handles. Add more, add more handles as well. Hold on to that idea because people have been thinking about this for for some time. <laughs> Since Rachel Neighbors in 2016. In 2016, and we still don't have a solution yet. But I think I think we're getting close. Um, ways of solving this, like you say, add more add more handles, right? That that's a that's a way a lot of people think mm. about it. Like, why not? Uh, you know, we, we have ways of defining um, shapes, 2D shapes. Put um, a circle in there. Why not? <laughs> well, there's well, there's one, right? Like that's you're, that is a definition of right. of that line you saw before. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, SVG line definition. True, um, but it is not just a line, is it? It's a function which has constraints. Exactly. So whereas like this does make sense, if you can have a path syntax, you could also do this. Cool. Uh, what would it look like? Well, exactly. <laughs> It doesn't make sense because you end up with like a single input having many outputs, and what does that mean? It, it's meaningless in the situation. Clone multiple items. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. 
But that's the, and that's the problem, it's, like it, it, it's trying to map a two-dimensional system to what is fundamentally a one-dimensional, like, as you say, it's a function, there's an input and there's an output. Yeah. Um, so this, this doesn't work. Um, so the solution we're looking for is not something which is uh, in 2D space, it needs yeah. to be in 1D space. And if you hear that and you're thinking, oh, wait on a minute, cubic Bezier is a, this is a, you know, I was just talking about the x and y coordinates of these things. Yeah. Um, and you would be right, this is a hack. It's, it, and watch, you could do this, and yeah. now we have the same problem. Same problem. But I think if I remember correctly, like, CSS autocorrects that when, once you like, do stupid things with cubic Bezier? Well, the restriction is you can't have uh, x values that are less than uh, zero. Mm. You can't have them that are greater than one. And so that's you can overshoot in y, but not in x. So there's the, there's the hack. That's the workaround to make this fundamentally two-dimensional thing mm -hmm. work for what is actually a, a one-dimensional system. So you know, people have been thinking more about this. Or, or, you know, could we express this as multiple phases? It looks like there's one, two, three, four phases. Like, you know, could you express that in a 2D way, but with the same sort of protections? Right. And then people started talking about uh, cubic splines, which would be doing it in a, a one-dimensional way. There was a lot of maths getting involved, and mm. then the conversation kind of petered out for a few years. <laughs> I'm out. Too much well, math. <laughs> well, that's the thing. And I, I was looking at it, and I, I, I think what happened is it, it was getting a bit like it was getting a bit too clever. Uh, and what what needed to happen here is it needed really dumbing down. And I, that's that's where you come in. I know someone. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy who can do this. So. Yeah, I, I thought about it in the same way you were saying before. It's like, this is a function. Yeah. So, and, and so this is, this is the way of doing a, a bounce. It's a, That's you know, a lot of math, isn't it? Yeah, but you copy and paste it from somewhere. It exists already. All of this uh, stuff's out there. You took the Stack Overflow approach. OK. Uh, there is a one big site that has all of the, um, the easing functions that we know and love, including these ones that you can't do in Link CSS. in the description. Link in the description, yes, absolutely. Um, but I thought, it's like, well, hang on. We do already have a place where JavaScript and CSS come together. Um, Just one? Worklets is, is one very like key place where they interact. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, why don't we do this then? Well, we've got our you know, easing worklet. Mm -hmm. Rather than, you know, we've talked about paint worklets in the past. Well, if we did this, and then inside, you, know, you, you defined your bounce animations, put the, paste the JavaScript code in there, and then in your CSS, you can do something like this. This is, this is fun for me to see, because this is effectively what animation worklet was supposed to be. That's what the first draft pretty much looked like. Not, not exactly as an easing function, but you were able to do that. You, you get the input value between 0 and 1, which was time, and you could do math. Want to use a sign function? Go for it. Yeah. All of that was possible. So you can, you can build uh, similar stuff with animation worklet, but you are, um, you are then driving the whole animation yeah. rather than just the easing. It is, and it's, it's more complicated than I would like it to be for something as simple as it. If you just want to do easing, animation work with it is like a big canon to use for just an easing function. Especially if you want easing to be in gradients and yeah. other places as well. Uh, so I shopped this idea around. I was like, you know, fix it with JavaScript. Why not? Um, and there was some like, oh, maybe internally, I spoke to Simon Fraser of mm. uh, WebKit uh, and Brian uh, Bertels from the, like, does the web animation spec stuff. And the fee well, Simon Fraser in particular said, well, so hang on, are, are these values being calculated for every frame? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And, and he was like, well, can, we, can I, you know, if I implemented this, could I just calculate them all in advance? Um, I mean, it's probably effectively side effect free. So you could just put the number 0 to 1 through it beforehand, right? Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, it kind of works. And it was Brian who was saying, yeah, these, these ideas are always going to boil down to that. It's like, given enough points, you, you, do you need a, a function? Do we need a whole That's workload true. system? And I realized that I, you know, I've done the same as a lot of other people in the thread. I've, be, I've started overcomplicating it. Um, so I went back to the drawing board. And yeah, sort of thinking about what Brian said. It's like, well, yeah, with two points, you can do a, a linear thing. Mm -hmm. But then if we add 5 and 10 and 20, and it, now it's starting to look like the thing, and with 50 points, I mean, there's no curves here. It's all just lines. It's points connected linearly, right? Like, there's no smoothness or anything. It's just like 
I, it's it's almost indistinguishable. I think the one you can see it on the one trough there, but I, I, I yeah, I, if you zoom in, yeah, you and can I see think it. if you actually use this as an animation curve, it's probably good enough. Well, because you're not going to look at the curve; you're going to look at the thing moving, right? Exactly. So I mean, here it is, and it's. I can see the linear lines. Yeah, can you see? <laughs> <laughs> but you would, uh, you know, for fifty points to look wrong, you are going to have to have a very long animation. Sure. Which I mean, is that ever going to? Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. Not for a, a bouncing no. kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it got me thinking of like, what, how, how could we define this? What would this look like? And I realized it already exists. Linear gradient has yeah. this similar system. It's a series of points that we connect linearly. Yeah, if you don't specify any like percentages, it's just like equally spaced between start and finish, and then just does the thing linearly between each point. So why can't we do this? You know, that, that, yeah. So this was the, the proposal I, I made. Saying like, well, we could just have yeah, you know, comma separated points, and it would distribute them itself. Um, I see why you would call it linear, but it really bugs me that the function is called linear. Yeah, do you know what this? Maybe that bit needs to be renamed because you're right. This this confuses people that it's called linear, but you I use totally it to get it, it, right? Especially with this explanation. But it's like if you look at it from a code perspective, like you're very specifically trying to diverge from the linear easing. Yeah, the reason I picked linear is because it's already a keyword in CSS, so making it a function is right. It's like, and, and the idea is, if you called it with no arguments, it would give you a, you know, the same as the linear keyword. Ah, okay. No, but I, I do agree. I think this might not be the right name for it. You just treat this like, I mean, if you don't like the word linear, linear gradient is the same, right? Yeah. It's just, it, but it's the thing is with linear gradient, if you like, ninety percent of the time you have, well, maybe. The, that's just me being lazy. But I feel like you only have two color stops, start and end. So actually, most of the time, it makes sense. But you're right. Like Once you have more color stops, it actually isn't a linear gradient anymore, is it? Like, it's linear it's, between the points you provide. Yeah. But yeah. But overall, it's not. But I, I've shown this to enough people, and they've you know, pulled a face at the name. Yeah. Whatever. You know, that can change. But yeah, just like you know, your gradients just add a point in there. And now we've got a midpoint that you can shift around. Like linear gradients. I was going to bring this up, yeah. So you can do this uh, with gradients as well, where you're specifying. You know, by default, that seven would be in at the fifty percent mark, but now I'm saying I actually want it to be at the so twenty percent. This is obviously bike shedding for something that isn't even real yet, but I feel like the twenty percent should go in front of the point seven because it would be it in this sense it's coordinates. Isn't it? Like, well, that's interesting. I, I but I also see we would follow the same pattern as I agree. Gradient. It's just like I was looking at it, like now this is now actually if you were to put the percentage on every point, it would be y x coordinates. <laughs> yeah. So there is there's a number of things to bike shit about this. Like you could say, well, why is it 0.7 and 20 percent? Yeah. Right. I and I was keen on those being the same kind of unit. Uh, Tab Atkinson is not keen on it, and I think that maybe means that you could have them the other way around, and it it would know which is which because one is a percent and one is a, a That's number. That's true. So and having percents makes sense because it is what linear gradient does as well. I but, see the precedent for sure. Uh, you can also I I for, keep forgetting this is a thing. You can do this with linear gradients, so why not do it with uh, linear easing as well? What does that mean? It creates an extra point. With the same value, it's the same value. Oh. So like that. And today I learned. So you can do that with gradients. So same with this is like, well, why you know why wouldn't we want it with this as well? Because you can create a that could stepped. be super handy for yeah. Because right now we, we do have stepped um, the step function in CSS mm. for you know saying you know, ease there, but just do it yeah. over it's five points. Yeah. But you can't combine easing and step. Yeah, but you can with this, like, because you can create the steps manually. What if you wanted so. to have steps, but the transition is slightly slanted? So you go exactly. Yeah, so you could you could do that easily. So yeah, and then you can just add as many points as you want, and create something like this. So you, this is your, your fifty points, and now we have bouncy easing on the web. You know, any we could do the elastic thing as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, it um, could probably get quite big. Like, you would need a lot of points for longer animations. But then again, well, like we saw, fit like you know this many. Works pretty well. Yeah. Um, I think this is fifty, uh, and and so that's your your bounce function. Someone raised the point of like, it's a lot of stuff to put in your CSS. It's kind of big yeah. and ugly. And also, you can't really tell from looking at it what it does. Right? Can you if, if the yeah no? I don't think you can, can with the cubic in a, in a, in a CSS one. variable in a proper custom prop and just oh like that yeah like that. So and I think that's the answer here. And then you would be able to just use it, bounce yeah, and that's the meaning of it. it probably gzips quite well as well. Oh, absolutely yeah. 
Um, so that that is what I've pitched to the the CSS working group and to browsers. Okay. And um, when are we shipping it? Well, Mozilla have, have said thumbs up. We want to implement this. Oh, that's good. Uh, Chrome folks have said the same. That's two. Only a fool would predict <laughs> when this will land in the browser. <laughs> I know a guy. <laughs> We might get this in Q1. Oh, uh, at the same time where the color in Canary. Functions. Yeah, in Canary. In Canary, sure. Yeah, well, you know. and and the, you know Firefox nightly if if you know things get moving in time, maybe Q2. But all all the pieces there, you know, there's there's still a possibility in future for being able to define these like proper cubic spline curve things mm -hmm. to do the more complicated thing. But I think hopefully this this is a great escape hatch. Like you can do whatever you want with this. Exactly. So fingers crossed. Should we do an episode? Oh, I'm going to just whinge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Whinge? I do like whinging, but <laughs> I, got, I got whinge. I got all whinge. I, I got, got, whinge. got, got all whinge. Oh, I, do we have oh, sound? Oh. It's a sound like with sound. We good, yeah? Everything mm. sounding good? Yeah. Right. All right. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. OK.